Turning longboards. It goes without saying that in the beginning, getting these things to follow our directions can be extremely difficult. Now, fortunately, there is a trick of the trade that many experienced longboarders do utilize to help turn these bigger boards a bit better. And this isn't just longboards, but it could also be soft tops or mid lengths. And it really helps us to allow the board to react better to what we're trying to do with it. This helped massively in the early stages of my surfing, and it's something that I teach a lot to the surfers I coach, so they can regain control of their longboards and learn to do some pretty epic turns at the same time. So let's get into it. So thanks for tuning in to another video here today. And if you are new here, my name's Ben Considine and I'm a longboard enthusiast, a competitor, a coach, and I'm here to share my learnings and experiences like this one today with you all. So if you do find the video valuable or you find something in it useful, feel free to subscribe. And if you know anyone else who might find it useful as well, feel free to share it with them. But let's get straight into the edit. Now, one of the common problems that I see beginner to intermediate longboarders have with turning these bigger boards is the expectation that the board will turn quickly. What happens here is we will direct our weight across the side of the board, but as if the board is stuck in concrete, it seems to stay exactly where we left it, leaving us going one way and the board the other. Now, I did want to quickly cover the basics of the turn so we know exactly what we're aiming to have success with. For any good turn, there's two major things that we need to get right for the board and then also the position that the body needs to come into. For the board, we need to talk about the tilt and the tail. What I call the tilt is the amount of pressure onto the rail we establish. This will of course move the board onto its side, engaging the rail in the water, which is what engages the rail and therefore the turn. It goes without saying, the purpose of this tilt is to make our board turn. Then there's the tail. And by this, I'm referring to the pressure onto the tail or the back of the board. Now, as we press onto the tail, of course, we get the elevation of the nose of the board, but the purpose of the pressure on the tail here isn't to actually stall the board or anything like that. We actually want speed for our turns, and the more the better. But without the pressure on the tail, we will have too much of the board's rail engaged in the wave. Unless we're going really fast, this will be a problem because this will increase the friction and the board will become too sticky. Meaning, like we said at the start, the board won't follow our direction and will go one way and the board will go the other. For our body position, it comes down to where we're looking, which should be where we're wanting to go, and ensuring that our rotation is getting our body to face the direction we're also headed. But for today, we won't get stuck in the weeds with that too much. We can focus on this in another video. So they're the fundamentals, the concept of the tilt and the tail to get our turns right. So it should be pretty smooth sailing from here, right? Now, unfortunately, despite understanding what we've just covered, for many of us, turning correctly can still elude us, which brings me to the backbone of what I wanted to speak about today, the positioning of our back foot. On longboards, one of the biggest problems I see for people, and this was also a problem for myself earlier on, was actually following all the rules and for our turns, keeping our back foot dead center in the middle of the board. But this can actually negatively affect our turns and here's why. By placing the back foot dead center on our bigger boards, we can still struggle with the tilt component of our turn. This is because of the width of the tail on our longboards. On shortboards, it's relatively easy. You can see with the back foot here, it spans almost the entire tail across. And so by leaning on the toes, we can engage some serious pressure on that side of the rail. And when we look at the heel side turns or our backhand turns, the same goes. On a longboard though, there's so much width at the back of that tail that by simply putting a bit of pressure onto the toes or onto the heel, it's not gonna be enough to actually engage that rail effectively. And so we will just bog a rail. And this coupled with the fact that many of us as longboarders don't actually put our back foot far enough back onto the tail. This means that we won't get that nice lift of the nose that we need to disengage the rail of our board. But we've also, in this instance, got our back foot further forwards on the board at a wider point. And so this just exaggerates the problem that we're already having. So the solution here is actually going to be having an adjustable back foot positioning where we allow ourselves to engage the rail more effectively by doing these lateral or side to side movements where we can put the toes further onto the toe side rail or the heel further onto the heel side rail. 
Now this change is really, really significant. I know it was a big change in my surfing and a bunch of the surfers that I've coached through, um, but it does make a big difference. And by doing this, we can actually make that tilt happen that much easier, which again is the common problem that a lot of us as longboarders have, where we place our foot right in dead center in the middle at the back of the board, and we can't engage that rail effectively. But if we can place our toes further on the toe side rail or the heel further on the heel side rail, all of a sudden, we've got so much more pressure applied to that rail and we can really engage that super nicely. And this is where our confidence with being able to direct that board uh, better comes from, as well as our progressions for our more dynamic, powerful turns as well. So now that we understand this conceptually, it's time to put it into practice. As always, your land practice is gonna be crucial here because getting the correct position for your back foot is something that we need to get right and won't feel natural in the early stages. Obviously, we don't want to go too extreme and have our toes over the edge like we're doing a hang five on our rail, but position the foot similar to this and repeat, repeat, repeat. Practice coming into the stance from a variety of positions, as you wind in the stance on the tail to commit a turn, coming straight into it from the cross step back. Then, once you feel confident with landing on your feet in the right position for the forehand and backhand turns consistently, you can practice this out in the water. So as you can see here, the tail is so wide. If I put my foot where I would like to place it for the board, as I put pressure on the toes there, you can see there's not a whole lot of weight that'll go on that side of the rail and vice versa for the heel. If I wanna put my uh, foot on this part of the board to turn, I do have to place my foot either further on the inside rail to turn toe side or on the heel side rail to put my pressure here. As always, some footage of yourself in this instance can be really helpful in the early stages, but you should be able to get a feel for the considerable difference in the reaction of your board anyway. Be prepared to fall as the board will react more quickly than it had before, but once you get this down pat, you can watch your turns excel and your surfing improvement as a whole in terms of positioning your board on the wave, excel with it. So thanks so much for watching today guys, I hope that was really really helpful. Um, if you did want any video analysis from myself, uh, make sure you check out the links down below as well as for any other ways that you might want to support the channel, I do really really appreciate it, but we'll catch you on the next one.